What's up everybody? Welcome back. It's always something uh, new on my channel. Check these guys out. Yeah. Hey! Hey. Konnichiwa boys. Well the uh, iron iron arm of the dentist here. <laughs> right. Went savage on the cable. Pulling too many teeth. Oh yeah. It was like right out of man. there. Rip it and rip it. <laughs> we were fishing last night and uh, Trying to pull the the trolling motor to, to stow it, and uh, watch this on the Chris uh, popped the stock trolling motor cable. So we called in uh, the county's finest trolling motor mechanic, Mr. Scott. And to my surprise, they actually got it up. There's some kind of release so mechanism. I'll, I'll show you. Show us. So this right here, this is. There it is. See, but, that's kind of what I was looking for. But it's locked into place. That's what locks a motor into place. Right. So this little thing, right, the same piece, the silver piece in there, you just gotta take a screwdriver, a stick, and push it forward. And that's the release. That's the release. So that's how we got it up. That's how we got it up. So in case you guys ever break your uh, stove cable on the water and need to pull it so you can actually get it back on the trailer, that's how you do it. And this is actually kind of what I was looking for uh, because I was familiar with it on the four trucks. But that's what locks into your little bracket down in there. Right? Gotcha, like right there. Okay, so there's a the release. So if you guys need to manually get it out of position, that's how you do it, okay? Uh, anyways, we are going to get back at it as soon as we conclude the repair. Are we gonna salvage? The trolling motor cable, what's the plan here? Uh, yeah, I would. Um, and then what I would do is when you get the new one, just pull that, use this one to thread the new one back through. Just fish it through. Yep. Because that way you don't have to disassemble the whole thing. Because luckily we were, uh, we, Scott was able to fish that through the two holes without, because then yeah, like you, have pretty to, complicated. you have to unhook the gas piston and then you have to take the whole motor head off and on the water that's not really easy no no so because you don't want to drop anything in the water heck no because that's something i would definitely do so anyways a uh, little hiccup has been uh, addressed cloudy frontal day i wouldn't call it quite post front as it's still continuing to move through the area but uh we'll see if we can get a couple more big big fish for mr chris to pull on whether it's big small mouth or hopefully his first muskie or his first pike. Right. We had one hook last night, but didn't make it in the boat. So uh, plenty of stuff on the agenda. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Subscribe to my new channel here. Turn those notifications on and uh, buckle up. Here we go. Yeah, we didn't lose very much water temp. 6484. Uh, Should still be. Oh, you got one! I was like, what's your popper doing? <laughs> First blood! Careful, you don't want to grab that rod any further up than that. You can pretty much manhandle these smaller guys. Oh. 
Uh oh. <laughs> Wacky rig smallmouth. Well, if you guys saw in the video earlier, like, you could see where we hooked him initially. And he actually came off. And as he was swimming away, he got re snagged, is what happened. Happens all the time with our tuna. Yeah. On those big poppers, you hook them here, and then during the fight, they rip off, and then bink! Yep. Cool, brother. Back on the board. For one today. Yeah. Thousand percent. Later, buddy. Perfect execution, man. Yeah, you know the holy crap, I got one bite. <laughs> I got ready to pop it. And then it was like, oh, it stopped. <laughs> uh, that's great. Oh, he's got it. Dude, that's a big one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a big one, buddy. Up, up, up. Lift up, lift up. Lift up. You gotta lift him up. Up and over the hoop. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Bro, that's a proper one. Redemption. So sick. Ah, uh, mid morning update. We uh, we ran a stretch of reeds for uh, nothing, and came across one of my uh, favorite gravel rock shoals. Still saw nothing, but came across uh, another shallow uh, point with some big scattered rock on it, even some boulders on it. Chris actually broke the skunk with a little two pounder. And for here, that's a pretty small fish, but they got us on the board. Uh, and then we just kind of set up perfectly on a line of boulders here. And I could see it as I was fishing my bird through it. And I just told Chris, like, hey, be ready. Fire right on that line. Uh, this is the same stretch of rocks, actually. He got his previous personal best. 6.3, was it? 6.3. 6.3 on that Pop Max Sexy French Pearl color. So if you guys want to watch that video, he actually bangs two sixes. In the same afternoon on the pot max that link is up here and in the description below but uh what's going on brother why were we fishing for pike because <laughs> you haven't caught one yet i know this is so much fun oh man look oh, at that dude. that's a good fish that he smoked it too oh. what is that all about yeah big reddish brown smallmouth in the ranger net excellent execution i saw that fish come up bro like it came up on that bait and you popped and chugged it and uh, she ate it yeah. so you definitely called it well done let's see if we can get that thing out you want to hold this real quick yep. let me see if we can get it without her freaking out she's probably gonna freak out oh oh i actually did it ah look at that Dude, look at that tank bro <laughs> That's how they're supposed to eat it. Perfect execution, bro. Man. It's easy. <laughs> so with smallmouth especially, it can be kind of hard to get access to these fish in the hooks. Can you pull on that line just a little bit? Give me some, get it taut. Doesn't take much, yeah, there you go. Just keep that bait out of the way. You can reach in through their gill plate here. Just make sure you're missing all those gill rakers. And then you can get to the hook and just reverse it. Hopefully she doesn't shake and put the other trouble into me. Okay, there it is. Oh boy. She ate that thing good. Too good. Okay, 
Okay, there's one point. Almost. Got the one point out. There we go. Oh, so. Oh god, oh god, gotta squeeze him, control him. So she got a little blood. It does happen once in a while. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put her in the well. Okay, we're gonna get a little G juice on her. A live well treatment. Get that water flowing. Get them upright. Okay, they're disoriented. Of this, I'll let her recover or regain her equilibrium. Got that live old treatment in there, run that water, get those oxygen levels up, and uh, no, I hate to say it, but. You know, we're fishing here, guys. We're using sharp hooks once in a while. Um, oh, she just came to life a little bit. There you go. Uh, once in a while, you know, you're gonna hook a deep hook fish even on an artificial bait like that. She just ate that popper the way we wanted her to. Yeah. All right, Chris, talk to me, man. Tell us how it's been. You know, people watch these videos, they follow us on Instagram, they see these big fish catches, they assume like, oh yeah, it just, it's that easy, right? It's, uh, you got to put in the work. Um, it's not, you know, go out and you just bang them all day long. It's, I mean, we've been out here, what, a couple hours? No bites. You just got to be on target on those high percentage areas. Yep. And focus. That's it, right? You see the difference that that makes. Because if you're not, I mean, it's, it's all, it, it, like they say, the devil's in the details. You know, you forget the details, you forget the, the small things, and I mean, you could miss out on a fish of a lifetime. Um, it's just about taking your time, focus, dialing in, and just, you know, doing what you can control to get the fish to bite. If they bite, you know, that's good. And then doing everything that you've been practicing to do to land them but it's definitely lots of lull time for 30 to 45 seconds of pure exhilaration that's it man every day it's as they say it's called fishing not catching that's it brother well you executed perfectly on that opportunity you got a great fish man that's a that's a fish of a lifetime for a lot of people it's but awesome. for for chris hafner that's just another big one on the popper right do it yeah, let's see our sure. yeah See our homegirl's doing here. Oh, okay, we got some life. I think he might be ready to go back. You want to give him a quick little release? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's ready. Once again, we had a deeply hooked fish. It was bleeding pretty bad, actually. Got in the live well, uh, put some live well treatment, and instead of just sitting there all day holding it upright, I actually used those fin clips for the first time just to help her uh, stabilize and get her equilibrium back and she's kicking quite nicely now in the tank. Still plenty of energy and spunk left. Support her belly, of course. Yep. And just get, get that bad, beautiful fish back into the lake. And I would just hold her by the tail. And as soon as it wants to kick, with just a little light grip. Yeah, you know, when it wants to kick free, man, just let it go. Yeah, no need to restrain it. There it goes. She's off. Here we go guys, we got a lot of fishing time ahead of us. We got one good one in the boat, two fish total. My man is on a roll. That's right. Gotta get a seven. Gotta get a seven. You guys heard it. Aim high, dream big. Oh, he's got it. Nice, buddy.
There's a follower. See that little yep. one? Hey! <laughs> hey. Good fish. <laughs> oh, these are such cool animals. Look at that. Awesome. Gosh, man. It never gets old. It really never does. I mean, look at the build on this guy. Just stumpy. So stumpy. Pop Max does it again. <laughs> Great hook set, or lack of one, which is perfect. Exactly what we want. Well done, bud. Fish number three. Look at that belly on that guy. It's the first one I've seen with all these little black dots. So at every one of these little black dots is an individual parasite. Oh, wow. Yeah, really common up here in the upper uh, Midwest. Yep, you see him a lot on all oh, these you fish. Oh, his mouth, too. Huh, yep. Oh, look at his mouth. What's he got? It's broken. See oh. ya. Yeah, he's a... He's a Got some battle scars. Yeah, <laughs> my man. That was fun, wasn't it? This dude's on fire, man. A little overcast. A couple bloops here, a couple bloops there. Got himself another nice smallmouth. All right, let's see if we can duplicate that. Oh, good grief. That thing scared me. <laughs> oh, what happened? Came off. Oh. Missed it. <laughs> I saw that one. Yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> My goodness. Oh man. Dude, that was a big one too. I know. I Double tap the talons down. Sit on this for a little bit. I had one turn and it was off. Dude, that was brutal. Oh my goodness. Did you guys see that bite? Koosh! Came at it sideways. That was a proper fish. That was every bit of five, six pounds. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, uh, don't make it, you know, don't feel bad, brother. I once fished with this guy named Kevin Van Dam. And he's, yeah, I was watching him missing them left and right too on top water. And just like, man, that's just part of the game sometimes. I'd slow your pace down by about 10 to 15%. You're pretty pumped up right now. I know, my heart is racing. <laughs> Uh, if you don't like that, you don't like the best things in bass fishing, my friends. That was intense. I mean, oh. was like 10 feet from the boat, too. I want to say I actually jumped when it ate, so it scared me. It's peace, quiet, tranquility. Boosh! Too cool. Try this park shed. Right behind me. Outside. Got it. Nice.
good fish. Oh yeah. There you go. Oh, wasn't feeling that. <laughs> you getting owned? <laughs> oh, oh, it's the nice thing about having a ranger net. <laughs> it's so big, they just accidentally swim into it. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, fish number four in the four. boat. Four or five. You're still shooting eighty percent, bro. Hey. 80 from the field is pretty good. Wish your boy uh, Russell could shoot that high. Yeah, why don't you pick that big, beautiful beast up out of there? A little perseverance, a little focus, and a big, small mouth to show for it. Yeah. How's that feel? Feels pretty good. <laughs> I always feel good to catch these. Yeah, look at the hook placement. Perfection. Pop that thing out of there. Let's get this thing back in the water. I got it. Oh, it's in there. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, look at that. I don't know what that is. Ugh. Yuck. Yeah, these things are just so chunky. Oh, okay. <laughs> Try to take your uh, take your thumb with them, huh? How how was that, dude? Let's line them up again. Do it again. <laughs> it's always awesome, man. I think you enjoy coming up here. Oh, dude, without a doubt, one of my probably favorite places to be. Um, Rad scenery, people, fishing. Yeah, can't ask for anything else, man. I hear that, brother. Well, if you guys are enjoying today's adventure, please subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my personal channel while you're at it. Turn those notifications on for both channels. And uh, yeah, let us know what you guys think. Have you guys fished in northern Wisconsin before? Pretty special place, man. Pretty special. So, appreciate you guys tuning in. That's my man, Chris Hafner. I'm all over now. We'll catch you guys on the next one.